We are blessed to have uh, with us this weekend Carol and, and Donna Graham, um, who we support as missionaries to Jamaica. Carol and Donna met doing mission work in Canada many, many years ago, and then took that to Jamaica. Um, but they, uh, they are a talented team of uh, workers and servants for the Lord and are respected highly amongst the churches there in uh, Jamaica, and it's a privilege to have them with us here uh, this morning. They're like family. We have supported them as a church all the way back to the hillside days, so uh, welcome. And Carol is going to uh, share with us a message this morning on pleasing God, so let's give them a new hope uh, welcome. <laughs> Good morning, church. It's good to be home. Don and I consider New Hope our second home, and we are so blessed to have people like you as part of our ministry over the many years, the 32 years that we have been serving in Jamaica. We thank you for your warm hospitality, for your welcoming, and just being a part of our family and our ministry and we just bless God for you. Our girls send their greetings. Some of you will remember them, the two little thing that used to run around the sanctuary. They are now big women off on their own, living their lives, but most importantly, they are still walking with the Lord, loving the Lord, and serving Him. And if we have accomplished nothing else, we can say we have accomplished something to see our children still serving God. And we just bless God for that. It's good to be in church this morning. How many of you are happy you're here? How many of you would rather be here than on some white sand beach in Jamaica? Okay, let me try over here. How many of you would rather be here than on some white sand beach in Jamaica in February when the temperature here is minus 500 degrees with 50 feet of snow? Not getting too many hands, aren't I? But it's good to be here, and we just bless God for the opportunity to be here. Let me invite us at this time to look at God's Word as we turn to the book of Acts, chapter 4, and we'll be reading verses 18 through 20. The book of Acts, chapter 4, verses 18 through 20, and if I was back home in Jamaica, I would tell my people where to find the book of Acts. The book of Acts is not very hard to find. It is some place between Genesis and Revelation. <laughs> so if you go to Genesis and put it in forward, you will find it. Or if you go to Revelation and put it in reverse, someplace in there we'll find it. Acts chapter 4, 18 through 20. Then the Jewish leaders called in Peter and John and commanded them not to speak or teach anymore in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John replied, Judge for yourselves whether it is right in the sight of God to obey God rather than men. For we cannot help but speak of the things that we have seen and have heard. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your word. Your word is life. Your word is living. Your word is true, truth that will transform our hearts. So as we listen to your word this morning, may we do much more than listen, but may we hear. May we do much more than hearing this morning. May we obey. And we ask now that you will bless your words unto our hearts and use it to transform our lives so that we can go out and transform this world for you. In Jesus' name, amen. From the verse that I've read to you this morning, I'd like to share a message entitled, Pleasing God. Pleasing God. Life is full of choices, and every single day of our life, we have to make some choices. Some of these choices are simple. 
For example, this morning when I woke up, I decided that I will make a simple choice. And my simple choice was this. I am now in the middle of winter, so I am going to dress like it. For you, this might not be winter weather, but for me, this is middle of winter. So if you notice, I dress a little bit different from you. This is winter for me. Anything below 90 degrees is winter. <laughs> Full of choices. Simple things like how to dress. Simple thing as what am I going to put in my coffee. I can put that fake stuff called sweet and low, or I can put the good old Jamaican cane sugar that your heart will thank you for later. <laughs> Full of choices. Some of these choices, like I say, are simple. But some choices are more complex and carry lasting consequences. The most important choice that you and I will ever have to make is the choice of who will I please? Who will I live my life to please? And every single day that we get out of bed that our feet hit the floor, we have to make those, that choice. Am I going to please God or am I going to please men? In the verses that was read this morning, Acts chapter 4, verses 18 through 20, Peter and John, they had to make choice. And the choice that they had to make was, am I going to please God or am I going to please the Jewish leaders? I am glad this morning that we have their example that they chose to please God. And I am trusting and praying that as we go through these doors to face life on the outside, and we are faced with decision that like Peter and John, we too will choose to please God. As we examine these verses, I would like to bring four things to our attention. First of which is, pleasing God is not a mystery. There are many mysteries in life, but pleasing God is not one of them. There is a meat called spam, and spam is a mystery meat. <laughs> is it pork? Is it chicken? Is it beef? One thing we know, it tastes like chicken. And since it tastes like chicken, I'm going to cut out the middleman, and I'm just going to eat chicken, not spam. <laughs> there are some things in life that are mystery. Pleasing God is not one of them. There are some things in life that are mystery. One of them is the road atlas. If you are a man, you know that the atlas is a mystery. Why would somebody come up with a road atlas if we're traveling from here, Marshalltown, and we are going to Denver, Colorado? We don't need an atlas. We know where we're going. If we end up in St. Louis, ladies, 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 if we end up in St. Louis as men, we are not lost. <laughs> men never get lost. So if you are Accuse your husband of getting lost in the past. When you go home this afternoon, please apologize to him. He was not lost. When we get in the car and we are going to Denver from Marshalltown and we are in St. Louis, we are only taking the scenic route. <laughs> and for your purpose, we are only going sightseeing. And if we happen to be in St. Louis, and we drive by the same McDonald's 10 times, we are not lost, we are just recalculating the route. We are not lost. Men don't get lost. There are some things in life that are mysteries. Pleasing God is not one of them. You will notice, ladies, because we are not into mystery, that there are certain things that we don't like. 
So you're not going to find too many men in the room who Orient, Murder on the Orient Express is their favorite movie. Not too many of us. Our favorite movie is Indiana Jones, Temple of Doom. <laughs> so you notice in that movie there's a scene, and the guy gets out his machete, and when Indiana faced this guy in the street, and the guy was going all kind of stuff with his mystery, we saw the mystery, we just pulled out a revolver and bang, mystery over. We don't like mysteries. That's why we like football. There is no mystery in football. Get that thing, knock everybody out of the way, and get to the other side. Come back and repeat it, do it for three and a half hours, and knock our brains out, no mystery to it. We like football. Many things in life are a mystery, but God's word and pleasing God is no mystery. You pick up the Bible and you may say the Bible is hard to understand. Yes, there are some things in the Bible, the book of Daniel and the book of Revelation, those may be a little bit challenging to understand, but the things that we need to please God, they are not hard to understand. And when we get the Word of God, if we read it, and when it says forgiveness pleases God, all we have to do is forgive. It will tell us that loving each other pleases God, all we need to do is love each other. It will tell us that walking in holiness and righteousness and truth Please, God, all we need to do is walk in holiness and righteousness and truth. There is no mystery to the things that please God. Micah chapter 6 verse 8 says, He has shown us, O man, what is good and what the Lord requires of us. The Word of God, the Bible, does not need editing. It does not need updating. It does not need obeying. All it needs is obeying. So when we come to God's Word, we don't have to debate it, update it, edit it. We just need to obey it. And let me say this. It is not what the majority thinks. It is not what the majority accepts that please God. It is what God says. We have probably heard the statement, God and me is a majority. Wrong. God and no one is a majority. God all by himself is a majority. And if God says A, and all the countries of the world says B, God is till a majority, and what he says goes. So the first thing that we learn from the passage this morning is that pleasing God is not a mystery. So if you want to know what to do to please God once you leave here, read the book of John. Read the book of Ephesians. Read the book of Colossians. Read the book of Titus. And anything it says to do, do it, and you'll please God. And anything it says not to do, don't do it, and you please God. There's no mystery to pleasing God. But the second thing is this. Pleasing God is a personal choice. Nobody can please God for me. Nobody can please God for you. Each of us must make a choice personally to please God. In Joshua chapter 24, verse 14, Joshua called the people of Israel together he was giving them his farewell address as he was about to die. 
and he says to them, Choose for yourself this day who you will serve. May I substitute the word serve for the word please? Choose for yourself this day who you will please. Pleasing God is a personal choice. And God has made it in such a way that it's not difficult to please him. You know, there are some persons who it's difficult to please because they don't know what they want. I'm one of those persons. Am I the only one? I remember a couple years ago, we went to a restaurant in Springfield, Illinois. And it's one of those nice restaurants. You know the one with the dim lights? And gentlemen, ladies, they tell us that the lights are dim for the ambiance, whatever that is. As far as I am concerned, the lights are dim so you can see the minuscule portion on your plate. <laughs> but I was there, the lights were dim, I didn't have my glasses. And so I don't hear very well when I don't have my glasses. I mean, I don't see very well when I don't have my glasses. And so Donna and the girls, they were reading off the menu to me, and I was to choose from the list of the feet and they would read something, and I'd say, I don't want that. Just like the grumpy old man, I don't want that. Taco bueno, I don't want that. Taco grande, I don't want that. And finally they gave up, and they say, when you make up your mind, tell us what you want, and we'll order it. You know, God has told us what he wants, and what we need to do is simply submit. You see, some people are hard to please because not only do they not know what they want, but some people are hard to please because they are just impossible to please. Stories told about a man who was celebrating his 50th birthday. It was a rather grumpy old man that was very difficult to please, and his wife tried everything to please him but just couldn't. And so that morning, she decided she's going to fix him his favorite breakfast. Eggs, bacon, toast, and coffee. So she came downstairs, and she made the breakfast, and he came downstairs a couple of minutes later, and he sat at the table and looked at the breakfast. He tasted the coffee. It was perfect. The toast was toasted just the way he liked it. And the bacon was fried just the way he liked it. But there was only one problem. He liked his eggs either fried or hard-boiled. So she couldn't decide that morning how she wanted to fix the eggs, whether she was going to fry them or boil them hard. And being the grumpy old man, she decided for once she's going to fix her his business. So she's going to fry one and boil the other one. So he looked at the breakfast on the table, tasted the coffee, it was perfect, tasted the toast, it was perfect, tasted the bacon, it was perfect, and he knocked the plate off the table, hit his teeth, and walked outside. And she was rather taken back, so she followed him outside and she said, John. What did I do wrong? I try so hard to please you. What's wrong with the coffee? And in this grumpy old voice, he said, nothing. What's wrong with the toast? Nothing. What's wrong with the bacon? Did I say anything wrong with the bacon? She said, so what's wrong with the eggs? He said, woman, are you an idiot? Don't you see that you boil the wrong one and fry the wrong one? There are some people you just got, please. But God is not one of them. And we have to make a personal choice that we're going to please God. I must purpose in my heart that no matter what, I am going to please God. And listen to this church. Listen very carefully. 
We do not please God by chance. We please Him by choice. Let's be old school this morning. Remember the old thing of the past? Young people, you wouldn't understand this. This was prehistoric. There was a thing that's called cassette tape that we actually play music on. We record it and play music on it. That's old school. So let's play a cassette tape this morning. And when you're playing the cassette tape, you'll press stop, rewind, and play it again. So I'm going to press stop, rewind, and play what I just said a while ago again. Stop. Play. We do not please God by chance. We please God by choice. So every single day we have to make a personal choice that when I go to school, when I go to work, when I get out on the street, when I'm interfacing with people, the decisions I make are going to be decisions that's going to please God. And we cannot wait until the situation arises before we choose we're going to please God. It has to be a choice that is taken before the situation arises. In my church in Jamaica, when you go to apply for a job, one of the things that they always ask for is for a recommendation from your pastor. And several persons would come to me and ask me for recommendations. And when they go for the interview, the persons interviewing them always ask, is there anything that I need to know about you that will help me to decide whether or not I should give you the job? And so I always prep the people who are going for the job what to say. I would say to them, if you go for an interview and somebody asks you, is there anything I need to know about you to help me make the decision whether or not to give you the job, I always say two things you should say to them. One, because I am a Christian, I will not lie to you, and I will not lie for you. So therefore then, when you go to work, and Kerry being your boss, and when Kerry owes some money to his supplier, and when the supplier calls to get his money, and Kerry's in the office next door, and tell you to tell them that he's not here, you say this, Kerry said to tell you he's not here. <laughs> not going to be here very happy. I will not lie to you, and I will not lie for you. Secondly, tell them, I will not steal from you, and I will not steal for you. And if they don't give you the job, you didn't need that crummy old job to begin with. God will provide something else. We have to decide in advance, before situations arise, whether or not we will please God. Brothers and sisters, pleasing God should not be something we do occasionally, once in a while. We have to make pleasing God a way of life. This is the way I am going to live. Peter and John made pleasing God a way of life. So when they were challenged by the establishment, when they were challenged by the religious leaders, it was their way of life to say, I am going to please God. The people of the world, non-Christian that is, have chosen not to please God. Their motto is, you're not the boss of me, so you're not going to tell me what to do. And since the world has chosen not to please God, as believers, we cannot conform to the patterns of this world. Hear the word of the Lord in Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. 
And do not conform any longer to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may be able to test and approve that perfect will of God. Because the world has chosen not to please God, the Apostle Paul says to us in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17, Come out from among them, be separated, and touch not the unclean things. Because the world has chosen not to please God, James says to us in James chapter 4, 4 verse 4, He that is a friend of the world is an enemy to God. Because the world has chosen not to please God, John says to us in 1 John chapter 2, verse 15 through 17, Love not the world, nor the things of the world. For all that is in the world is the lust of the eye, the pride of life. These are of the world, they'll pass away, but he who do the will of God will remain forever. May I say to us this morning that we cannot please the world and please God at the same time. It's worth repeating. We cannot please the world and please God at the same time. So Jesus says to us in Matthew chapter 6, verse 24, no one can serve two masters. Either you will love the one and hate the other, or cling to one and despise the other. So in a world that is becoming increasingly unfriendly to the things of God, you and I have a choice. And the choice is, who will we please, God or men? So first, we have learned this morning that there's no mystery to pleasing God. Secondly, we have learned this morning that pleasing God is a personal choice. But I must say this, based on the text, pleasing God comes at a price. We're not going to go through these doors and go out to a world that is hostile towards the things of God and make the decision to please God and the world is going to be happy with us. It's not going to happen. When we choose to please God, the world will not cheer us. They will jeer us. When we choose to please God, the world will not cheer us. They will jeer us. They will not commend us. They will condemn us. When you and I choose to go through these doors to a hostile world, and when we choose to please God, the world will not praise us. They will persecute us. But Jesus says in Matthew chapter 5, verses 10 through 12, Blessed are you when men will persecute you and revile you and say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. The Apostle Paul says to us in 2 Timothy 3, verse 12, all who will live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. There is a price to be paid for pleasing God. Let me give you four quick examples. Joseph. Joseph was in Egypt in Genesis 39 in an ungodly country. He was tempted by Potiphar's wife. And he refused. He chose instead to please God. And Joseph ended up in prison. We come now to the book of Daniel. And there in the book of Daniel, chapter 3, we see three men. Their names are Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, alias Rakshak and Benny. They made a choice to please God. And they ended up in the fiery furnace. In Daniel chapter 6, Daniel himself made a choice to please God. He ended up in the lion's den. 
In Acts chapter 4 and 5, Peter and John made a choice to please God. They were beaten for it. Pleasing God comes at a price. There is a song, nice, sweet, catchy Christmas carol, Christmas song that we sing all the time at Christmas. It brings a smile to our face. The title of that song is Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. We have all heard that song, probably have sang it herself. There's something that's not right with that song. Have you ever thought about the words? Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer had a very shiny nose. And if you ever saw it, you would even say it glows. All the other reindeers used to laugh and call him names. They wouldn't let poor Rudolph join in any reindeer game. Absolutely nothing wrong with the song so far. Then one foggy Christmas Eve, Santa came to say, Rudolph, with your nose so bright, won't you guide my sleigh tonight? Absolutely nothing wrong. Here is where I have my problem. All the other reindeers love it, and they shout it out with glee. That may happen in Rudolph's world, but not in Cariel's world. For you see, when people don't like you, nobody's going to shout out with glee when you succeed. And when you choose to please God, the people at work, the people at school will not like you, so they're not going to be shouting with glee. They will shout with some foreign words that we don't use. When you choose to please God, it will cost. You remember in school we learned this little gem, 60 second, one minute, 60 minute, one hour, 24 hours, one day, seven days, one week. There is 60 minutes in every hour except one hour of the day, and that is the lunch hour. There are 60 minutes between 10 and 11, but there are 70 minutes between 12 and 1. And so if you go to work, and everybody is taking an hour and 10 minutes lunchtime when it should be an hour, and you choose to please God and say, I'm going to be honest with my employer, and I'm just going to take 60 minutes. Listen, you're not going to be voted employee of the month. You're going to be voted out the front door. Pleasing God cost. And it would be nice if I would tell you that if you stand to please God, you're going to get an invite to the White House to receive the Congressional Medal of Honor. It's not going to happen. Don't wait up for it. The phone is not going to ring. Pleasing God cost. But the fourth thing we see in this verse before we close today, pleasing God is not a mystery. Pleasing God is a personal choice. Pleasing God cost. But if you read the rest of the passage, you find out that pleasing God carries great reward. Pleasing God carries great reward both in this life and in the life to come. There has never been a person who lived their life to please God and God abandoned them. When we go back to the examples that were mentioned and we read about Joseph in Genesis chapter 39, the Bible said, and the Lord was with him. When we go back and we read about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in Daniel chapter 3, the Bible said there was a fourth man in the fire who looks like the Son of God. When we read about Daniel in Daniel chapter 6 in the lion's den, and when Nebuchadnezzar came and called out in the morning, Daniel said, the Lord has sent his angel to protect me. God will not abandon you. You're not going to please God, and then God is going to say, what fine mess you get yourself into. You've got to get yourself out, um, out of here. No. He says, never will I leave you nor forsake you. Hebrews chapter 13. He says in Matthew chapter 28, verse 20, Lo, I am with you always to the end of the earth. 
He says to us in Isaiah chapter 43, when you pass through the waters, you will not burn. When you pass through the fire, sorry, when you pass through the waters, you will not drown. When you pass through the fire, you will not burn because I, the only one of Israel, is with you. When you please God, you can be assured of his protection. When you please God, you can be assured of his provision. When you please God, you can be assured of his presence. When you please God, you can be assured of his peace. When you please God, his presence is with you, his peace is with you, his power is with you, his protection is with you, his provision is with you. There is a reward for pleasing God. So Jesus said, blessed are ye when men revile you and say all kinds of things about you. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. May I close by saying this? I would rather please God and displease men than please men and displease God. For you see, when you please men, you incur the wrath of God. When you please God, you incur the wrath of men. And I don't know about you. I would rather incur the wrath of men than the wrath of God. You know, this is a very difficult sermon to live. Because you see, when we get out there in the workplace, when we get out there in the schools, when we get out there in the committees and the world that are hostile to the things of God, it is easier said than done. But pleasing God is the right thing to do. In Jamaica, in the United States, all over the world, there are more and more laws that are being made to challenge us, the people of faith, as to our walk with the Lord. And I trust that no matter how many man-made laws are made, that the laws of God in our lives will always take precedent over the laws of men. Peter and John says, choose whether it is right in the sight of God to please God or men. It is always right to please God no matter what. Joshua says, choose you this day who you will please, if I may use the word in, please instead of serve. As for me and my house, we will please the Lord. I trust this morning that all of us can join with Joshua and says, as for me, I will please the Lord. You know, the greatest pleasure that you can give to the Lord this morning is not your money. The greatest pleasure that anyone can give to the Lord this morning is not like Don and I to go to Jamaica or Africa or any foreign country as a missionary. The greatest pleasure that you can give to the Lord this morning is if you are not a Christian, to surrender your life to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Nothing brings a greater joy and a greater pleasure to heaven than a life surrendered to the Lordship of Jesus. So you're here this morning, and you're not a Christian. We're going to sing a closing song, and during that song, we'd like to give you the chance to step forward and to make a commitment to surrender your life to Jesus Christ. Maybe you're here this morning and you once walked with the Lord, but you have gone back to the world. What greater joy than you can give to the Lord than to come and renew your fellowship with Jesus Christ? Or maybe you're here this morning, you've been worshiping at this great church for a while and you're looking for a church home. What greater joy than to be a part of this fellowship? Or maybe you're here this morning and you're having some struggles 
where, whether at home, at work, at play, or wherever, your struggle is pleasing men or pleasing God, and we are more tempted to please men. We would like to pray with you this morning that the Holy Spirit will empower you that as you go back to face this situation this week, that you'll make the decision to please God. So we're going to pray and ask the Lord to help us to make whatever decision we need to make. And then we're going to sing our closing song. And we'd love for you to come and make that decision public. The elders are going to be standing down here. They'd love to pray with you to find out whatever decision you make. And we just, we don't want to do this to embarrass anybody. We just want to be a loving church that help you with whatever decision you make. So if you would come as we sing, then they will meet you down here. They love you. They pray with you. And they'll just help you to get over whatever struggle you may have this morning. Let's pray this morning. Lord, we thank you for your word. Thank you for these wonderful people from all different backgrounds who came out to worship you this morning. Holy Spirit, I pray your blessing upon each life here this morning. And we know that as we go back out to a world that is unfriendly to the things of God, that we have some tough choices to make. And every day we are challenged as to who will please. Will I please God or will I please men? Help us, Lord, that when those situations arise, that we will choose like Peter and John to please you. Lord, I want to pray for that man, that woman, that boy, that girl, who have not yet said yes to Jesus. May this be the day that they do so. For those who are struggling with different issues, Lord, may this be the day that they receive victory. And Lord, we thank you for your love for us. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy and your forgiveness. And we commit our lives to go forth from here to live lives to please you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.